Hey YouTube, welcome to Tying Tuesdays. My name is Brady with Avidmax and today we're gonna tie an egg sucking leech. This is a pretty effective pattern in the fall when there's uh, some spawning fish, brown trout and stuff like that, and you wanna target some of those bigger fish. Um, so the first thing we're gonna use for this pattern is the Tiemco, this is an impet hook, it's a 3X long. This is the 5263. We're doing a size six today. And we're gonna start our fly off with this McFly foam to do the egg pattern. So it's a cool material. It uh, flares out real nice when you're tying. You'll see that in a minute. Um, to use a nice strong thread on that foam, we're gonna use this Vivas 6 Ot in white. It's all gonna be hidden underneath the eggs, so the color's not as important. Just the strength there is the most important thing. The body of our flyer, the main thread we're gonna use on the body, we're gonna use this Uni 6 Ot in black and just a natural black color. And then we're gonna rib the fly with some UTC Brassy Silver Wire. We're gonna give it an underbody with some of this purple uh, medium chenille, cactus chenille, which is a great shimmery color. And then the main portion of our fly is gonna be the black rabbit strips. This is the standard size rabbit strips. Let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start our thread here doing this egg sucking leech. Just a quick thread base here and this is going to be the base for our egg of the egg sucking leech. It's kind of a two-part fly. I'm going to be using two different threads on it. Uh, the first one here you can use GSP. I'm using just a Vivas 6 Ot in white. It's just a really nice strong thread. That's all you're looking for um, when you're doing this McFly foam style egg. So we're going to take a good generous piece of this McFly foam and lay it down right on top of the hook shank and kind of cover both sides of the hook. So you can see I can go all the way around on either side. And then we're gonna take our thread here. And I kinda like to see where I'm coming up, but I'm just gonna do a quick, very loose thread wrap. And then start to pull our foam a little bit. Give it another thread wrap, maybe do two or three. And then start to pull, stretch out your foam so that the thread starts to bite down on it just by pressure of the bobbin here before we tighten it all down. This is just so that when we actually go to cut our egg, it's gonna flare nicely for us. So we'll give it a nice tight wrap here now, and go around a couple times, keep pulling on it, and stretching it down. The more you stretch it, the better look you tend to get out of your eggs when you're all done. But once we're kind of happy with that tension there and the position of it, we're gonna pull all our material up and around the hook, hook uh, shank here. Get off of the hook point. But just straight up in the air, tighten my vise a little bit. And add a lot of pressure, so you do want your hook in there nice and snug. And we're just gonna pull all the material up and out of the way, just like so, you can see what I'm doing there. And stretch it still, and then we're gonna start to bring our thread up and around, almost figure eight style. Kind of get this to lock in place here. So a few wraps in front, a few wraps behind, and you can see I'm kind of pulling the material back as I'm doing this. And we'll even go up and I'll go around it once, like so, before we go to trim this all out. Okay. So now I'm gonna do just a quick half inch. Actually, I'm gonna finish this off here now with a whip finish underneath this egg. And then we're gonna go into our trimming of it and that's what's really gonna make it look like an egg here. So pull all our foam upwards, nice and taut. Just like so. And then we're gonna come in with our scissors at an angle, kind of off of the hook eye there and just trim it up towards the center. And then kind of when you get to the center, Come back down towards the back. Make sure you get all that material. You can see it starts to give us just a nice rounded egg here. It's pretty oversized. I'm gonna trim this down quite a bit, but it's just a cool material, this McFly foam. And I should have probably actually used a little bit more foam on it. This will give the look and the idea of what we're trying to go for here. As you pull it down, you can kind of get the shape of what you're looking for. Get all that foam just to do what you want it to. 
You can always have some excess down where that seam is on the bottom. So you can kind of pull and trim out. And then come back and just give it a little shape. It's nice having a rotary vise for when you're doing this. You can just kind of turn it, look at it, see where you're at. Uh, trim up a nice round egg. I'm not going to spend too much time making it look too pretty for you guys, but just kind of give you the idea there of that egg on the front end of the hook. Okay, so from there, we're going to start our second thread. This is the black six hot in uh, the uni. And just start our thread here to get the leech part of this pattern going. And the first thing we're going to do, adjust my hook again here. There we go. Is start our ribbing. So this is going to be that brassy size silver wire. I'm just going to tie in right on the side of the hook shank here. You can also do these weighted if you want to add a little bit of lead. You would do that right here. Some 020 or 015 lead wire. I'm going to come back. All the way to the back of the hook. Shank right at the bend there. And then we're going to tie in our next material, which is going to be our medium chenille. This is the purple chenille. I think it's a nice underbody color, very flashy. It's a good color to use in the fall. Fish are coming around. And with this uni thread, Using the Tiemco adjustable magnetic bobbin we've, we've shown in the past. It's a great bobbin. It's a premium bobbin from Tiemco. Um, if you haven't tried it out, give it a shot or, or look into it at least because it's, it's like none other out there. Fully adjustable and just a great product. So now we're going to go back up towards the front of the fly, back behind where our egg is there, and we're going to give a quick half hitch. And then we're going to use our bobbin cradle here. And you got to do that half hitch before you go to the bobbin cradle. Otherwise, you'll just start spooling on extra, extra thread, which you don't need. So we're going to do the body of our fly now, which is this chenille. And we're just going to use our rotary with everything in place there and give tight touching wraps towards the front. This is a 3x long hook. It's kind of important to do the 3x long hook on these egg sucking leeches just because you do take up a good amount of space towards the front with that egg. We'll wrap right up close to it. Get the bobbin cradle out of the way. It swings real nicely out of the way on this mongoose vise. We'll capture our chenille and trim that out. Okay, so from there, we got one more material we're going to tie in, and that is going to be this rabbit strip. This is the black color in the rabbit strip, so I've already got a piece cut. I'm going to trim it down a little bit for though. And what I like to do on these, you can kind of see that there's a piece of leather underneath. You can pull out a little bit of the hair, just right up where you're going to tie it in. It makes it kind of clean. You don't have anything fraying out on you when you tie this in this way. So you can see there I have it just pulled back a little bit. I'm going to tie this right onto the top of the hook shank and snug it down right behind that egg there. And we'll do another half hitch just behind. And we're going to bring our wire up. So utilizing our bobbin cradle again. It's really nice to have a rotary on this kind of a pattern. You know, big bugs like this, I like to be able to get everything out of the way and start to wrap. So next step on this fly, we're going to rib it out and we're going to use the ribbing just to hold down the leech, uh, the rabbit material for the leech here. So you'd spread your hair out kind of where you're going to start to wrap it and then kind of wrap it around here. Just trying to keep the hair from getting matted down as we kind of start to wrap it. So each time before you wrap, get the hair that you need to out of the way and then come down on the piece of strip there as we go forward. So let's see, four or five wraps towards the front of this pattern. Just like so. And then we're going to 
to capture off our wire. Pretty simple pattern to tie, very effective as well. And then we're gonna do one more thing here at the end, just to kind of cover up those wraps. So first we'll come back and we're gonna trim it. I'm gonna trim it just a little bit longer than the shank of the hook there. And what I like to do is I'll trim it at an angle. So if you come in and you kind of trim it straight, you'll get straight ends on the end and it's not as natural looking, but if you cut it at an angle, then it gives that rabbit strip just a more natural tail. Okay, so we're gonna do that like so. And then the last step on this fly is gonna be a little bit of a collar. I'm gonna use the same material. It really just kind of cleans up and covers up some of the materials that we got going on. But we'll do a dubbing loop. And this is going to be a closed dubbing loop. So we're going to wrap a couple times in front. And then we're going to go around the thread twice to close off our loop. And then go back towards the front. And then we're going to use this, this uh, Gallup um, dubbing loop tool here. It's a great tool from Rising. It's developed by Kelly Gallup, famous white tire. I think he's out in Montana. Um, does a lot of these kind of uh, bigger bugs and things like that. And it's a, it's a very handy tool to have. So I'm gonna take my rabbit strip and I'm gonna spray the hair, spray, splay the hairs out, excuse me, to the side there, just like so. And I'm gonna use these and place them into my dubbing loop. So well, we're gonna open up our dubbing loop here just with our fingers and slide the rabbit hair in. So, once you have that rabbit strip in there, you can kind of cut off the leather, leather portion here. Make sure you don't pull your hair out. Okay. And then we're going to give it a spin. Just get it to create a nice working strand there. Okay. So from there, all we're going to do is wrap this, but I want it to all lay backwards. So I'm going to use just a little bit of saliva on this, kind of pull my strands all to one side, pull out anything that's loose in there. And then we can start to wrap this around the collar of our fly here. As you wrap it, you can kind of get it working back as you wrap it over itself here. So it just nests right up in front of that egg there. Okay, so now we can take our thread off our bobbin cradle, bring it back around, capture our dubbing loop, and tie off our fly. Trim that out. Pull everything back again. Neat wraps, and then we're going to use this whip finish tool. This is the Dream Stream whip finish tool from Umqua. It's a nice product for these larger patterns because it has a little bit of a larger gape there for the um, thread and to get over the um, the egg here that we've created. I'll just do four or five whip finishes and trim out our thread. So there's an egg sucking leech pattern for you. Very effective pattern in the fall or anytime there are spawning fish around that, uh, you know, any other species are kind of chasing around eating their eggs and, and looking for opportunities, uh, big meals like this. If you like the video, make sure you give us a thumbs up on it. It's also an area down below where you can drop us a line and leave a little comment for any future fly tying or product related videos that you would like to see. For more fly fishing and outdoor related videos, subscribe to our Avid Max YouTube channel. 
Thanks for watching and we'll see you out there.